All right, kids. What? It froze up. What's up? Oh, play episode. Play episode with deleted hands. Play deleted hands only. Play episode with deleted hands. All right, kids. Another lesson in the dojo. you to see it, envision it, because if you can see it, if you can truly envision it, it's already written. This is the Foxwoods Resort Casino, the largest casino in the world. And you know, Mike, it's our third season here, but I still get lost here. It's very big, let me tell you. <laughs> it sure is, Vince. But you know, it didn't seem like any of the players got lost. We had a record field of 674 players show up to be in this tournament. They each paid $10,000 to enter, creating a whopping prize pool of over $6.7 million. It's just incredible. And then $1.5 million for the winner, plus he gets a guaranteed $25,000 seat at the WPT Championships, at the Bellagio, and that's potentially worth a lot more. So it's just, just big money right here. Well, these guys are raring to go. Let's go down to the table and meet the players. On the short stack tonight, in seat number three is David the Dragon Fam. This is David's third WPT final table. He's starting out with 323,000 in chips. Starting out in fifth chip position with 964,000 in chips is tournament newcomer, 35-year-old Temp Hutter. Temp is an accountant out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, seat number four with 1,159,000 oh, chips. Oh, shit, quite a table. Costa Rican sensation, Umberto Brennis. Now, last quite week, a table. His brother Eric won a million dollars in the Aruba <sighs> Copa Classic, and Umberto is hoping it runs in the family. Starting out in third chip position with 1.2 million in chips is J.C. Better. Tran. J.C. is a 27-year-old player from California, and this tough young gun won't be afraid to gamble it up here tonight. Okay, and speaking of gambling, in seat number six with 1,376,000 is 26-year-old Tuan Lee. Don't let the choir boy looks fool you folks. Tuan Lee is an aggressive and very unpredictable poker champion. Oh, you're right, Vance. He is fun to watch. And in seat number one, with 1.7 million in chips, is our chip leader, Bradley Berman. Now, Bradley's father, Lyle Berman, is in the Poker Hall of Fame. Yeah. But tonight, it's the son who's looking for his own place in poker history with a win here at Foxwoods World Poker Final Championship. Okay, it is going to be a big night here tonight. So, Mike, who do you like? Well, Vance, I'm going to go with an underdog today, a guy who's only been playing poker for two years. Twan Lee might pick the win. Very interesting. I'm going with Umberto. Let's see what happens. Okay, we can shuffle up and start dealing plays. Well, here we go. The World Poker Finals at Foxwoods about to get underway. And Vince with 674 oh, yeah, yeah. uh, entries. This is the largest event in the history of the World Poker Tour. It is just incredible. Just a couple seasons back on the World Poker Tour, we only had 89 players play here at Foxwoods. You know, just incredible growth that we've witnessed at literally every venue out here on the World Poker Tour. Don't forget the champion's going to take 1.5 million. All right, action is going to be on David Pham. He looks like an ace five offsuit. Now he is an expert poker player, a former tournament player of the year. He caps his cards here, Vance. Looks like he's interested in playing this pot. He's the short stop. Doesn't have a whole lot of chips. Now he's under the gun, as we say. Meaning he's got to fire first, and he's doing it right here. 64,000. Right into Alberto Brennis, who peaks at a jack six. But it looks like he just stepped off the set of scene in the rain. <laughs> and he throws this away. JC folds. And now he's around to Twan Lee. 
He's got Jack eight of diamonds. The button in front of him. A creative starting hand. And he's got good chips. He's in good position, but he opts to forward. Range the chip lead of Bradley Berman. He's gone out. Round to Tim Potter, who looks down at Ace King. He's got big slick and the big blind. Counting takes his time. Goes into a little acting job here. Well, he's just trying to figure out what to do. Costing forty thousand more to call the raise. No race. And he's going to raise it. Ouch for David Pham. He's thinking to himself, Chamber has got a win with this bluff. This guy on my right has to push it up. $120,000 more. He's king. And, and don't forget, David Fan was the first one to act, usually in that place. Man, this kid's green. You're going to call this green kid with that garbage ace? You better not. Yeah. You raise under the gun. Play no fucking garbage ace. Figured that out, and yet has still re raised him, so he's got to put him on a strong hand here. You've got to think so. And he is going to lay it down. So chop one up to Tim Hutter. Oh, man, the guy from Virginia, the guy with a real job, watches the World Poker Tour, says, I'm going to take a shot, puts up his money, and now he's going after 1.5 million, truly life-changing money. My name is Temperance Hutter. People call me Temp. I ran out of clothes before I got here. So I had to go out and buy another shirt and some underwear yesterday because I'm not supposed to be here this long. One of the great things about the World Poker Tour is that anyone can come out and play in these events. Here we have Tim Hutter, who drove up here from Virginia, put up his 10,000 events. The guy's got a great shot to win this tournament. It is exciting. It's got to be for Tim Hutter. Once again, we are playing No Limit Hold'em, the game that could make you or break you. Two cards down, five in the middle to make your best five-card poker hand. Action's going to be on David Pham. Looks down at Ace-9 offsuit. Pretty solid starting hand. And about 200,000 left. Peaks in Alberto. He is going to raise it. Yes, he is. He's going to get aggressive. And it comes in for 90,000. Technically a garbage ace, but it is six handed. I'm short. I'm all in or I fold. So I already fold. Pulls his hand. There's the JC. Finally, finally asking David how many chips he has. Right, he should because he has ace four spades and the button in front of him. Pretty solid starting hand. Finally, should recognize here that even though David bet ninety thousand, he's essentially bet all. I like that ace four suited so better than an ace nine garbage. Somebody re-raising. He'll be getting over three to one odds on his money. He is essentially pot committed here. Juan Lee, a gambling style player, has a lot of chips. Is he going to pull the trigger here? Looks like he is, Vince. Raise. Well, he is going to raise it. Oh, boy. Well, he's going to set the dragon in here. Now, Brad's quickly going out with the ace nine. Now it's around to Temp. Temp's got eight seven of spades. It's 200,000 to him to call, so he opts to lay it down, but the dragon quickly calls. He is going to love what he sees, Vance. He's got ace nine. His opponent's got ace four. What a great spot for the dragon to double up. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back from Foxwoods here on the World Poker Tour. Ace nine and ace four. Woods, where the action is fast and furious. On the second hand of the tournament, David the Dragon Fam is all in with Ace Nine versus Tuan Lee's Ace Four. Will the Dragon breathe fire, or will he go down in flames? So right now, David the Dragon Fam in great position to double up. Whether you win the pot or not, you gotta love to have an opportunity to win a big pot. When you're dominating your opponent like this. Well, here we go with the flop. Oh, a four right in the door. Oh, just a disaster here for the dragon. 
Remember, we saw him a couple weeks ago on the World Poker Tour where he finished third to Carlos Mortensen when he played a monster pot against Carlos. Got very unlucky and lost that pot. Will it be deja vu here again tonight? Or will he double up and fight back to victory? Oh, the dragon's circling the drain right now. Here's the turn. Well, a seven comes off. Not going to help the dragon there. He needs a nine to win this pot. He'll get a tie if an ace or ten comes up. <laughs> oh, you've got a feel for David right now. Can he do it? Here comes the river. It's a six. Now, remember what I said before, the hand started. I'm all in or I fold. If he goes all in, it looks stronger. David the Dragon fam, very unlucky at this final table. It looks stronger than his fucking bullshit little baby bitch raise. It looks stronger. There's a good chance that Twan Lee doesn't want to double him up. But when he bets like a pussy, Twan Lee's like, well, hey, maybe I got two ways to win. Let me get in here, let me raise him, let me scare him off, whatever. But you all in or fold with that fucking hand. Don't be playing no fucking middle. 26 year old who's only been playing poker for a couple years, taking control of the final five here. I think the strongest strength is not being afraid to put all the money in with any hand. You know, so I know that you really don't need quite to win. Twan is very, very dangerous. He's fearless. It seems like we're playing for 10 bucks, not 1.5 million. I play a lot of poker, probably 70, 80 hours a week. It's paying off financially, but as far as emotionally and stressful, it's not an easy job. I promised my friends that if I made a substantial amount of money, I won't play poker for the rest of my life. I want to stop playing by the time I'm uh, 30 years old. A substantial amount of money, 10 years, 8 figures. If I win today, I would get 7 figures, so I just have to win about 10 more of these. As you can see, folks, he's an action player. He is not afraid to mix it up. Twan Lee. He's picked up a nice hand, ace queen. And this is a guy that doesn't necessarily need a nice hand to bet. So it's nice when you show you can play a little bit. You right. know, the action he's going to raise it, makes it 84,000. we have selective aggression. Right now. We're going to be aggressive in the hand we play to win. That. But we're not going to be playing an, an extra amount of hands. But the perception will be, when you play your hands aggressively, they remember that. Round to Umberto. He's got queen, eight of diamonds this time. A little money already invested in the pot. It's the kind of hand you like to play sometimes against aggressive players, because if you hit the flop, they're going to keep betting at you, and you're going to make some money. Not going to do it, though. But Humberto opts to fold it. And he's on J.C. Train, who's got ace, five of diamonds. He's been a hand that he gets a guy like See, that's a calling hand. I mean, very well think is the best that's a hand. calling hand. You can hit a straight, a flush, but don't table. die with that ace. Just know that. He's going to call it. Does this play remind you a little bit of Gus Hansen, you know, that likes to get in there and mix it up all the time? This is true. Here's the flop. Ooh, good for JC. He's flopped a pair of fives here. But he's going to check it. Juan taking a quick glance at JC, also checks. <laughs> Onto the turn. No bullshit, baby. And it's the king of clubs. So far, JC with the best hand with two fives, but notice that Twan has now made a flush draw. He is the queen of clubs. And look at him, he is just seeing the possibilities. And he's gonna bet the two fives. 150,000 by JC. Right into Twan Lee. What's going through Twan's mind here is, is his ace queen the best hand right now? Well, he is going to call. Folks, this guy's got gamble in his blood. Going to try to snap off a queen or a club here. That's all he can win this pot with. Unless he opts to bluff at the river. River card coming up. And it is the club. Gets a club. He does get the flush. Oh, what a miserable card there for JC. Poor JC. Well, JC's checked it. 
And here comes Twan firing chips at the pot bets, 130,000, trying to get in a little value bet. But if your opponent doesn't have a flush, very unlikely you're going to get called here. Uh, and JC does lay down the hand. So a gambling call on 4th Street by Twan pays off again. So he flops a five in the flop. Decides to check it. Then an overcard comes and a flush draw. Now he bets. Too late. Should have bet that flop hard. Twan probably would let it go. But you waited. Gave him the free card. Bet your hands. We're going to be the selective aggression. The hands we play, we play to win. Which player is going to win that $1.5 million first prize? We'll find out when we return on the World Poker Tour. Everybody's got to have a lot of luck to win, so people get good cards and play and win big pots with them. That's part of the game. fast Mike and he is on the left of JC Tran and that is a bad thing to happen for JC he's got a wild man on his left with a ton of chips action's going to be on Humberto Brennis Humberto Brennis very quiet so far now he's a great table talker once he gets going it's time he looks at an ace jack off suit pretty good starting hand for Humberto well he gives it a thumbs up that means he's going to raise it Uncle JC on his left. Studying him intently here. You do that because you can pick up information on the strength of your opponent's hand sometimes. So Humberto makes it 75,000 to go. JC's got ace 10 in his hand. JC so far marching like he's on two left feet here at this final table. Nothing going right for him. He's on the short stack. He's got ace 10 here. So he does he know Humberto has ace jack. All right. Well, he is going to raise it. Come on. Oh, he's going to go all the way with it. Yep, comes over the top for about 460000 all his money. And it's one lead now. It's one. He's got eight five. Throws it away quickly. Brad Berman, going out, around to Tam. I hope I didn't hit the fucking hands. Hand. Not interested, and it's back to Umberto. I probably missed and the hand. What a decision he's faced with. Nearly a $400,000 raise. He's seen so far that nothing's gone JC's way here at this final table. It's a cold deck for JC, but what I like is he pushed all in. He's actually getting him to consider folding his check. Oh, no, 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 it's pork. I would get rid of it. I left it out for Nick earlier, and then I was doing things and didn't even fuck with it. But, yeah, because I wanted to eat it, too. So, um, what I respect is he went all in with it. And so now this guy's considering folding ace jack, where Tuan Lee was like, I'm in the pool with fucking ace four clubs because you're fucking raised like a pussy. I could call, I could raise you, I could be the boss, and you know what I mean? 
Don't leave them the option. Put the pressure on them when you're sure. When you need to. Okay, JC would take three big gulps for a mouth into what Humberto had. Well, Humberto says, I keep you alive. Oh boy, he did. See the difference? So Major he's feel good difference. About taking down his first five here today. Right. And he's really going to feel good when he sees that Humberto lay yeah, down. Do it right. Do it big. He is one happy guy. He finally turns it around. JC is my fucking dog. Because at the LA Purple Class in Commerce, I finished seventh and that hurt a lot because I felt like I deserved to be there. I've always seen him play great the few times I've seen him. And he gets like cold fucking decked or fucking bad beat or something. I mean, guy, guy is semi brilliant. That was his first pot and he won it with the worst hand. Yes, he did, but well played. And right now, the antis and blinds are going up. We're talking about an ante of five thousand dollars, with the blinds being twenty and forty thousand. That means that all these players put in eighty-five thousand per round here, whether you play a pot or not. Okay, the action's going to be on Bradley Berman, straight off the Civil War fields. Looks down at his hand. He sees the Motown hand. Jack five throws it away. Now it's on Tim Hutter, who has Jack nine. Plays it down. And then Berto. Button in front of him, the king deuce in his hand. Lays it down. And JC with a pair of threes limps in in the small blind, as we say. He just calls the bank. Right behind him, Twan Lee with a legitimate pair of sixes wired. This is pretty do? old, but. Are they, are they the blinds? Right. Twan's gonna have none of it, he's gonna raise him. Oh boy, this is getting personal between these two. I mean, I come in raising and never limp in. Unless maybe he's a small blind and he's going to raise like, it whatever. But now what do you do I would come in raising three? and now he would have thought his three. hand was inferior. Now he thinks his hand's in, um, the uh, better hand. So he's going to play more confident. Oh, you smack him back to JC. So what I was saying was uh, if he raises, it's like, hey, I got a good hand, but then he just limps in. Twan Lee raises, and now I'm not sure what he's going to do, but I just like to come in raising. I want to represent, I want to show this limping. This is old, this is old. Maybe it still happened, but no, no more. Not for me. Only. You know, what's going through Twan's mind is, hey, the guy limped in. Is he trapping me with a monster hand here? Okay, he limped. And then went over the top. I, I'm not sure how short he is. I don't, I'm trying to think, is that a good play, bad play? It's like, what happens is you take your stack and you limp in. He raises you, and then by the time you push all in, you don't have enough to scare him. So, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not exactly sure the stack size there, so. That's a little iffy again. Do I wanna do I wanna try to just see a flop or am I gonna push all in blindly? So I think I would have probably just called the re-raise or depending on how much I had left, because yeah, if it's too much then yeah, I guess you gotta gamble and hope he folds. But if you don't have enough to make him fold and you got threes you're a coin flip at best, and I don't want to be a coin flip at best. I want to be a coin flip at worst. But when you're short, it's hard to determine that. So maybe when he sees the threes, like I said, I come in raising. Your strength would make him hide his hand. You hear what I'm saying? If he raised the threes, 
Now Tuan Li can be like, okay, he has a good hand. I'm going to call my, my pairs and try to trap him. But when he shows weakness by limping, now Tuan Li feels like my sixes are the best hand. And I can dictate what's going to happen. And I can re-raise and I can force action. So now he put him mentally in the driver's seat. So things like this can mentally charge the other player depending on your play. So remember that. It's key. You're going to inspire the other player to believe his hand is better. And now you're up against it with a hand that can't possibly be better than a coin flip. So think twice. Believe me, when I'm short, please give me pockets. But if I have to, I'll shove all in pre-flop. I'm not going to do a half bet, let him raise, and then me push and not have enough to scare him off. So that's key. And so it's not just enough to scare him off. Like I said, once he did that, and Tuan Li seen his sixes, he felt like, I'm raising the better hand. Okay? Or you could have raised your hand, and now he will look at his hand and not necessarily feel it's the better hand, but just make a call and help the trapper bust you. So now you get to see a flop of your threes because of that. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying when I'm telling you this, that he could have seen a flop with his raise and had Tuan Lee flat call. But by limping, it gave the guy who's got the chips to be like, I'm going to bully him and put him in a bad spot. And now he's got him in a bad spot. Hopefully that gets across what I'm saying. Is he wanting to raise it, or is he making a move here? If he makes this call, this pot will have well over a million dollars in it. Well, he's going to do it. Well, he's doing it. Gambling twice. I did respect the try, but like I said, to too little, hand. too late. Two sixes against two threes. Jason Tran sickened by seeing a pair of sixes out in front of him. Well, some days you just shouldn't play pots against other guys, it looks like. Well, that is this is true. one of those days for JC. But there are five cups to come. He can get lucky. And certainly he can. Right now, Twan Lee in a dominating position to knock JC Tran out. Pair over pair. 1.5 million for the champion here. So here comes the flop. Now flop comes king, queen, nine. No help for JC so far. And JC Tran is looking for threes right now, I can tell you. He needs one badly. Oh, he is in very grave condition right now. Two cards to come. Here's the turn. And it's a douche. No help for JC. No, close but no cigar. And right now, JC Tran must catch a three ball here to stay alive in this tournament. Last card coming up. Don't do it. He doesn't get it. And eight comes off. JC Tran out in fifth place. He's going to pick up 353000 well, Vance, he took $1,000, won a single table tournament to win his entry into this event. He's taken home over $350,000, so a nice week here for like JC Tran. Could have seen the flop for the raise, maybe, I believe. And or pushed all in, wow. and then you'd probably get a fold. A so I feel like there were two other options that were better. Just something to think about. We are down to four. Who's going to become the champion of Foxwitz? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more on the World Poker Tour.
and you could probably go for days and days and not see all of it. We've really created a satellite program, I think, that is unique in the industry. We actually started running these satellites about five or six months ago, 24 hours a day, almost seven days a week, which equates into over 50,000 entries into these satellites. Over 250 players who are in this tournament have qualified through satellites. I would never be able to put down $10,000 to enter this tournament, so it definitely gives everyone a chance. For $60, a player can jump right in. 60 in, 28,000 out. I love satellite. <laughs> So we were at Foxwoods, and my, you know, Foxwoods is really known around the world for its unmatched system of satellite tournaments. Oh, yeah, you're right, Vince. The satellites truly are amazing here. All year long, for only sixty dollars, you have a chance to win over a million and a half dollars. That's true, and that's twenty-five thousand times your money. This is exciting. Let's get back to the table. Here we go. Right now, our current trip leader is Tuan Lee with a little over three million. Bradley Berman in second place with over a million and a half. And Humberto Brennis and Tim Hunter both have over a million, so it's still anybody's game. Don't forget the winner will become a millionaire for $1.5 million. And it is going to be on the CPA, Tim Hunter. Looks like my king deuce, he folds. Humberto Brennis with the button in front of him has an ace deuce in his hand. Humberto in a disadvantageous position in terms of chip count because... The two guys in his bonds both have more chips than he does. There is no problem here. He is going to raise it. It's like 140,000. It's going to open up his game four-handed into Tuan, who's got a miserable-looking 8-3 offsuit. Get out of there, Tuan. Oh, look at him. What is he thinking about this? This guy will call a telemarketer. How much you got to go through here, does he think he's playing with an amateur? Size up how many chips Humberto has. Folks, he has an eight-three. Maybe he feels like he could hit his um the spectrum that's not into um Humberto's spectrum. You know what I mean? But man, why at this point? Why get so fucking frisky? Oh, that's gotta hurt him. Reduce it up. Throw a hand away. But now we're around to Bradley Berman, who's got ace nine of spades, and says he's gonna raise it. Wow. Welcome to the game, Bradley. Wow. Yeah, I'm burning that ace too. Out of the shadows, Bradley Berman. First hand play. You know he's, he's not bluffing. Two hundred sixty thousand. He's made it four hundred thousand to go. Oh my God. Will you suppose I play with him? What do you do? And Humberto says I would have played with Juan, but you. That's another story. Perception at the table of Bradley Berman being solid and tight, throwing away a lot of hands. And could potentially pay off from here. I don't know who put this in the couch. The dog is fucking super tight in the air. So I'm on the table. I'll leave him on the bed. Trying to figure out a hit from this. Humberto fully understands the aspect. He knows he's out. He just wants to look serious. He's, he's not even considering. There's no way with this guy raising the first hand he's ever played in a year. Civil War statue. Humberto can get nothing. He shows an ace and throws it away. Very well done. Well, give Bradley Berman credit there for coming over the top of Humberto. Vince, he's got the bloodlines of a poker player. His father, Lyle Berman, in the poker hall of fame. He is in the audience having a great time rooting on his son. Bradley Berman still in good shape here with four players left. A great chance to take this title. It's great that my father is a world-class poker player, but through my whole life, I've always tried to just blaze my own trail. If I win, it's because I played hard, and it's because I deserve it. Well, what's going to be interesting, Mike, is now that we're down to four-handed play, you got a guy like Tuan Lee, who is very aggressive, but can these other conservative players so far, like Bradley and Temp, change gears and go into a more aggressive style? Well, good point, Vince. They're going to have to if they want to win this title. I don't know if they can, but I certainly know Humberto can. There's no question about that. He's got all gears to his game. Okay, well, action's going to be back on the chip leader, Tuan Lee. And this time he's picked up a monster hand, Vance. Ace has got big slick. And that is a tremendous hand. Extra tremendous for a guy like Tuan Lee. 
The reason it's good for him is because most of the time they think he's stealing the time. That's where we left hand. off if you wanted so to watch the, the circle. Hand, puts him on one. And he is going to raise it, of course. It's uh, that season, that's like the very yeah. end of the last episode we watched. So if you remember, you can go to episode five. It's like 170,000. Are you looking this to watch the circle? Right into Bradley Brown. Looks at his hand. Ooh. Two keys he's got back. Oh, he's got a gigantic can. Keys wired. And a ton of chips in front of him. I raise. You better believe it, Bradley. Notice where he's going and looking down at him. He popped out of his chair like a jack in the box. But we did see that if you want to go back to five. I'm the person that's got a hand. Tell me. I was playing on the table. Oh shit! Pocket gigs. Four hundred thousand more. Very solid we raise. If if I don't have to dance with him, I don't he dance with him because there's no fucking way he's bullshitting. He's got a wide pair of threes. It's crazy. We raised by the chip leader. Two threes, a very easy hand to get away from. Okay, to Alberto. So the six four. He's not to get in the middle of this battle. So he gets out of the way. Now we have our two chip leaders. Both have a monster hand. What's going to happen? Buckle up He's probably going to at least call, see if he gets an ace, I'm assuming. Look at this, Twan Lee. He's getting out the heavy artillery, Max. Says, how much have you got down there? Bradley loves to hear that. He's just begging for a raise now. A misstep by Twan. Oh boy, he is going to raise it. Well, he's essentially setting Bradley all in right here. Now, Brad's saying, well, is this guy possibly have a pair of aces? Doubtful. You got to love the Kings. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's got to do it. Especially against a guy like Twan Lee. What a great position for Brad to double up here. Wow. I swear to God, I could have folded Ace King there. Let's see if I got the chips and not worry about it. Although knowing Twan, he's gonna hit the Ace. Become our chip leader for Bradley. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the World Poker Finals. We have a major confrontation going on right Pretty sure he gets lucky Bradley a few times to win this. Not that he's not good. Love the aggression. But, I mean, there's obvious spots to where, like, I'm being... You know what I mean? He's literally going into this with three outs, so it's... You know, I'm, like I said, I couldn't lay that down easy against that player. Yes, far and away, the biggest part of the night. Here comes the flop. Well, it's 10 10 deuce so far. Bradley Berman out in front. I'd forgive you doing this at a fucking final table shorthanded, but not during the tournament. Not in the middle of a fucking tournament. Don't do that shit. Having to sweat out two more cards. Here comes the turn. Well, it's an eight. So far, so good for Bradley Berman. We're down to our last card, and right now, Tron Lee must catch an ace to win this spot. If Bradley Berman can dodge a bullet, he will be the substantial chip leader at this table. Here comes the river card. Wow! Unbelievable! Yes, he's hit the ace at the river. Like I said, he got a little lucky. I would have made that fold easy, though. Because you know that's not, you're not going to get that in the long run. It's in the long run, please. Going with the Fu Manchu here for the tournament. Let me know what you think about it. It's just in its infancy, though. What a bad beat for Bradley Berman right there. That is as bad as it ever gets. Oh. Well, <laughs> Umberto Apprentice walking over and trying to rub some of that buck off of Tuan Lee onto himself there. But right now we are down to three, Mike. Juan Lee now the monster chip leader here with nearly five million in chips. Tampa and Alberto both with just slightly less than a million. Juan uh, Lee just rolling over this field. Let's see if it'll continue. Uh, action's on Tim. 
CPA out of the jail. This time, picks up a big hand. He's got ace, ten, close. Nice starting hand. Three hand with a special. You're right, in the three handed game, it's certainly a hand that you're going to play. Especially in position and the double. Looks like Temp's getting out some raisin chips. Let's see what he does. And he is going to do it. Makes it 120,000. Nice to him, Bertha. has got King Deuce of Clubs. Lays it down. Look at this. Twan Lee with a pair of eights. And he's got some octopuses there. Wired pair of eights. Yeah. I want to get to a flop with eights. I'm not trying to be a fucking hero. So I would call, get to a flop, hit my set, bust him. If not, get out of dodge. CPA trash talking here. I don't think it's working. Raise. He is going to raise it. Boy, he's angry raise at that. I'm all in. Look at all in, he says, I'm all in. Temp trying to take it in stride there. And right now, Temp's saying, why did I say anything? Well, Humberto over there, high five in the crowd here, sort of backing into possibly second place at worst. I got a uh, fucking suited Broadway. God bless you, motherfucker. The most aggressive player, the chip leader, re raises me. Yeah, I'm all in. See what kind of hand he has. basket at church, but believe me, he's some gambler. Ten times those chips are pretty good for an accountant, I'll tell you that. Pair sevens or something? Look at that, he's got a pretty good read on the situation. He certainly does. He says he has a pair of sevens. Oh shit, he put him on sevens. Don't you can just feel his migraine headache right now, can you? 674 players battle to this position. We're down to three. You want me to gamble with you? It's getting yeah. into that him. Asking Twan if you want to gamble with him. That's not a question you should be asking that guy. Ugh, he doesn't care. Come on in, mix it up. If I lose a pot, I'm going to have four million in chips. Do what you like. Sees uncomfortable call. Oh, boy. Well, he does lay it down. Choosing to take another battle on. Well, in truth, he's wondering, did I make the right play there? He doesn't know for sure if he made a good play or a bad one. Well, most poker players think that a big starting hand is usually a good thing. But as Sean Hyde is about to tell us, bigger isn't always better. But that's the subject of this week's poker point. If you think the best two starting cards... Okay, I was being biased there because I seen the hands. Although, like I said, because of the opponent, the chip lead and all that bullshit and final table. Oh, fuck that motherfucker. But I know Temp was thinking ultra deep. Temp was thinking, I'm a coin flip at best. He was right. He was right. He was a coin flip at best. Good job, Temp. Heads off to you, brother. In Texas, holding are a pair of aces. You're right, but they don't always spell success. To many pros, big cars mean big trouble. I hate two queens with a passion. Beware the ace king. Ace queen, nothing but trouble. Don't play them. Throw them away. The same way I'm here. Well, two main threats to master cards: small pairs and suited. 
with connectors. By playing the smaller cards against opponents you know are playing big cards, this is definitely an advantage to that, especially when you have a lot of chips. Because if you turn your hand, you can beat the big cards and win a giant. And if you miss your hand after a flop, it's easy to throw away. It's always better to start with big cards. The problem is, it's tough to get away from it. You tend to hang on to it too long. Ace King or Ace Queen may look dreamy at first, but remember, there's still an underdog to any pair. Phil Ivy is all in with Ace Queen. He's up against Josh Arias. Two threes. Oh, it's a three. He's made three of a kind. Phil Ivy is out in sixth place. This is a bad hand. The books still recommend to get your money in pre flop. You know, both decisions, there's like, there's gray areas where both decisions could have been right. To call that all in, you're at a final table, fuck it, I'm gambling. You know what I mean? But I, I respect the player because he knew if he did have an ace, he will always wonder. He was fucked. Only bluff a good player. Bad players will call everything and anything. And with the blinds and the antes, these players are putting in seventy-five thousand every three hands, Vince. Give me some cards. That means that you've got to get in there and mix it I up. I gotta tell you, or you're gonna get what a away. great table. I'm very enjoying very expensive. it. Expensive, and right now, Tuan Lee with close to five million. Action's gonna be on him. Let's see what he does. And he looks down at an eight four of hearts. Feeling like King Cut over there with all those chips. I can blame you. He's won every pot he's played here tonight. He's going to bump it up again. Makes it 120000 to go. Every time. Into Tim Putter. Oh, hallelujah for Pimp. He's picked up Ace Queen of Hearts. Very solid hand. <laughs> Could be revenge time for you, Tim. I love that he said before he even looked, he's like, every time that motherfucker got a hand, he's betting. Folks, when you're the short stack. At the tournament, you pick up Ace Queen of Hearts in a three handed game. Just can't imagine you're not going to play it. Well, he's got an interesting acting style. He takes his time, he milks it. I'm going to race. He is going to raise it. So he's coming over the top of Tron Lee here. Let's see how much. A little bit less than 800,000 in chips all together. 300,000. 300, nice strong raise. First you got Umberto. Mm -hmm. 10 with. Let's see what Umberto has. And it's down at 8-7 a spade here. Also a nice starting hand. He this knows that's garbage. Raise. That's right. Because it's been raised and re-raised. So you hand you get away from. He knows one of them was bluffing, though. Back to turn. We started this mess. With his silly little 8 4. He's looking to see how much his opponent has here. See, Twan's approach there is right. Thousand. You know, come in raising, but so no one to back off. I'm sure he's going to back off. So, what that should tell Twan is that even if he plays a little of this pot, essentially he's going to be putting in all the chips. There's no way Temp is going to lay this hand down if Twan moves in on it. You're right. He can't bomb him out of there. He's got to know that. 355 more if you want to do it. This is the kind of hand that you might call $300,000 raise if your opponent had several million left, or you could win substantial money if you hit your hand. It's not the kind of hand you want to race with or show down with and just hope you get lucky and win the fight, I wouldn't think. But I'm not trying to leave. He's calling. He's calling. He's going to call it. He likes the action of sport for him tonight. So far. Let's see if this pays off. So here comes the fly. It's 9-6-5. And that does give Twan a gut shot straight draw. But the tempo's all in in front of him. Flop didn't help him, but... Well, you know Continuation bit. Fuck you. I can't blame Temp. I'd have gone all in no matter what came out there also. Cab fare. To you. That's another reason that Tom's call is so weird in my mind. Because he doesn't even get to act first where he can bet first. 
You gave him on the call. That's why I would have went in pretty, all in pretty flat. But he's got balls, man. I love this guy, Tim. That's my dog. The D-O double G. He's going to pay off a little bit more. He can get to see two more cards and maybe outdoor and bust this kid. Maybe he just feels like he's on a big rush. Right now he can catch anything. That's why he called with the 4-8. Maybe he thinks he can hit the gut shot straight. He's going for it here, man. He's going to pay it off. Look at Tim. He can't believe his opponent turned over an 8 4 here. <laughs> well, I don't blame him for being a little shocked about it. Absolutely stunned. This tournament has me on the edge of my seat. I'm standing the whole time watching this. He sure can. He can catch a 4, a 7, or an 8. I should have went all in before the 4. All right, it's up to Twan Lee. Now Deuce comes up. Three is good, two is one. Mm -hmm. That gives Juan four more outs. If he catches a three now, he will win this five. So now he needs a three, a four, a seven, or an eight. Last card coming up. Here it is. Eight. Well, it's an ace. So there you have it. Tim Hunter doubling up here off the chip leader, Juan Lee. Supposed to show you patience paid off. I guess I gotta say, I believe that's the first misstep that Twan has had tonight. Twan, you scared the hell out of me when you called that back. Well, I think it's the first misstep that he didn't outdraw his opponent. He's gonna like it. The stakes are huge, and so is the excitement. Don't go away. Well played, Tim. You get all the chips. He definitely would have folded if he pushed all that brief out. But still, I hate to be that scared. I probably would have pushed all that brief out. Welcome back to Connecticut and Foxwoods World Poker Finals. I'm Sean. But you know what? You can't be as scared of the one opponent. You need one sucker in. You don't want everyone to fall. We're playing to win pots. We're playing to win pots. We're not playing to win blinds. That steal the blinds? Yeah. For who? For what? Who's, you know anyone who ever won a tournament stealing blinds? Stealing blinds is um, a result of you raising your hands. They fold, you steal the blind. But you don't, you're not going to make some shit up just to steal the blind. It's going to be a product of what you do, playing poker. Like I said, blinds are a fucking myth. You think you're protecting your blinds? You're protecting stupidity. Because blind, think of the blind as what it takes to see the next 10 hands. And if you take your blind personally, you're a fucking idiot because there's 10 people at the table. One or two of them are going to raise and you think your hand's better. If you ever get but a great hand or a hand that can fucking hit a flop, you know what I mean? Great. Uh, yeah, play it. But other than that, don't be calling garbage because you're fucking the big blind or the small blind. No. It's a myth. Let it go. He's getting after chips. It looks like to raise. Yes, it does. And he is going to raise it. Makes it 90,000 to go. And the temp putter. Time temp peeks down at a six deuce. Very dismal hand. Slight chuckle throws it away. Look at this. Humberto Brennan has picked up two kings. Oh, you're the one that called Just a gigantic king. Oh, yeah, I, I missed it. How did he do those points? Like, Julio replaced his son's going off on his head right now. Trying to contain his excitement, though. He went off and barely burned his head, too. So he played the Kings and then walked out of the arena right after that hand. Close. Oh, and he's going to do the raise. Let's see how much he's going to raise it. He just tuned in. The last chips are worth 10,000. The alpha ones are 5,000. And they have a big hand like that. They're going to be too strong. They're going to be too slow. With the right increment. Uh, right here, $180,000 re-raised by Umberto Brennis. Into Twan, who has got a very unspectacular clean nine. Twan has just been noticing. Yeah, I've seen it. Since I came in. Jump wanted to know if he still wanted it. Because he says he'll take it if you don't want it. And looks like he's going to call this. Yes, he is. He just does you know, not have to lay down hand, folks. And right now, he could be heading for quick yeah, change here. Right Humberto uh, Brennis yeah, with two hands. Juan Lee with the queen. Okay, here we go. Look at this. 
The Brennan's brothers are. How about the release brothers? Weeks on the World Poker Tour. It is just incredible. So Humberto Brennan's trying to battle his way back into this match. Still in third place, about eight hundred eighty-five thousand. Finally, our chip leader with over four million. Tim Hunter in second place, one point eight million. The winner once again going to take home one point five million dollars. Action's going to be on Tuan Lee. This time he's got a big hand, ace, queen, clubs. Yes, he does. And the blinds have gone up to 30 and 60,000. It's so sick. It's like, who's going to believe it, bro? He's going to get the action. It's very expensive to play right now. You notice what's happened here. He's made it 135,000 to go. Tech looks at 10, 8. He folds. So this is not a big raise by Tuan Lee. Back into Humberto. And Humberto in the big blind. There's 40,000 out there. He's picked up a 9-7 of hearts. Good, he made it cheap. You can see a flop for cheap. He says, how much more? It's only 75,000 more to call. And he's going to play the rush, it looks like. Oh, fuck yeah, I call it every day, every day. It cost him 75,000 more to call. He does so. I meant all day, every day. Now the flop is 10 a deuce. That gives it open in a straight draw to Umberto. Yes, it does. It's not hit. All in. He's put up Stand up and match. fucking dance. Look what's coming here. He's going to get the running start of the all in play again, it looks like. Yes, he does. Oh, he is going to do it. Oh, boy, he's going to give us a free dance, too. Look at this. That's high five in the crowd, indicating he's got a monster here. Uh, <laughs> He would love this I, I like it. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck this punk. Well, this is what we call a semi-bluff, folks. He made that bet to try to win this pot right now, but even if his opponent calls, he's going to have outs to win this pot. I mean, it's just the brilliance of this guy doing two times in a row. One time he had a big hand. This time he has a hand that is not made yet. It's ego to call it that. Okay, good lay down. Great bet. Great call. Great bet. Look at Tuan shaking his head no here. Oh, the mind game. Now it looks like Robin Hunt. See if he would have won the pot. Sit down, Humberto. You won. I don't think I ever seen a Berto make a bad play. Tuan Lee getting out played there, Rent. Nice Punked his ass. <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back from Foxwoods on the World Poker Tour, a show that launched the sport. I don't like to finish second. Welcome back to Foxwoods Resort Casino. We are down to three. Farley still our chip leader with 3.8 million in chips. Followed by Temp Hutter, who's close to 2 million in chips. And Humberto Brennis has about a million in chips. Just brilliant focus tonight. Panties at 10, blinds at 30 and 60. Action to be on Twanley. And he looks down at Jack, three of diamonds. Look at this, man. He limps in, he calls on the button. There's something we haven't seen today by Twan Lee. <laughs> it worries me when he does that. <laughs> it's true. Well, we understand what you're thinking, Tim. Got that right. Temp looks down at four deuce of clubs. He's got some Kobe. already. It cost him 30000 more to call. There's 180000 out there already. Does he want to splash around? Yes, he does. He is going to call. 
Uh, Bourbon looks down at a 10 deuce offsuit. He checks, so here we go. Friendly poker. Everybody involved in this pot. So here comes the flop. And the flop is Queen Jack Nine with two clubs. Everybody's hit a part of this flop. Yes, they have. Very interesting flop here. Temp has the flush draw. Umberto has the open end straight draw. And Twan's got the pair of jacks. Action is on Tim. Amateur, so called amateur accountant from Virginia, playing in the big leagues right now. World Poker Tour. Four to the flush. And he's going to bet this. Yes, he is. He bets 120000 Umberto chucks his hand. He lays down the open end straight draw. Now Twan, the second best pair, pair of jacks. That's a pretty nerving call by him, in my opinion. But he's making it 120,000. He calls with the two jacks. You know, Tim can't be too happy about that. That is a quick call. Turn card coming up. Ooh, the five of clubs. Tim Hutter has made the flush. Yes, he has. Just a giant card on the turn. Bet it. And he has his opponent drawing dead, as we say. There's no card that Juan can win the You look more with. guilty checking it than betting it. it. Bet it. I love when you hit it, when you hit it, back. if you no check, you look more guilty. Right and your bet comes from oh, the river. The good side. So they check behind you, and in the river, you bet so and they fall. Really bet it, and they'll stuff. fucking call you or re-raise you. Notice Twan Lee is focused totally on him. And folks, generally speaking, when a guy acts weak, he's strong. Bet when he acts strong, bet he's it. weak. He's going to bet a half a million. Oh, yes. But Twan quickly throwing his hand away. Yep, I think Twan read him like a book there for having a big hand. He's like one of those casting directors in Hollywood saying, thank you for coming in, and then you're out the door. Well, a nice lay down by Twan right there. Now, let's just go back to the critical moment of his hand. And in my I don't give a shit he folded. When the club came out of events. Maybe you should have bet it and sooner. What happens is, the longer you wait, the weak, more they get scared. So, anytime you want to make a play, like you know, like a bullshit play or just a bullshit call because you want to see what they do, then take a little time. Because when they get, when you take time, they overthink. And when you overthink, you're fucked. this three-handed play, we've seen Juan Lee go through a million and a half dollars here. The other two players increasing their stacks. If you overthink anything, I promise you, rising. you're fucked. You wonder if Tom it's pretty clear. Now, Your frozen the notion is, 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 is probably true. This is the but you don't always have to follow through. A lot of times, the, the, the play is in front of you. Show, the the, the play is obvious. World, you can get a dig and deep and look for some greed or whatever. It's going to be pretty easy. Just relax. It'll come to you. Six off-suit and folds. Alberto Brennis, money in the pot, Queen 10 in his hands. Always smiling. No, he just loves the competition of poker. This guy really loves to play. Well, he limps in with the Queen 10. Now, could it get fancy now? Antoine Lee, he's got a pair of deuces. He does have this, but he's going to raise it. He raised 120,000. She said, it is. Those are things. Well, Bruno's saying, that's not a very big raise. I'm going to call that. There's two. The old saying is, err in the sight of caution. In poker, the saying is, err in the sight of aggression. If you're not sure what to do, Raise or fold. 170,000 out there. I'm going to put in another 120. So here we go. It's clean 10 for Umberto, two deuces for Twan Lee. Well, the flop is ace, queen five. That is nice for Umberto. He's hit a pair of queens. Action's on, Umberto. He's going to play it slow. He's checked it. And quickly, Twan Lee goes to a stack, gonna bet the two deuces. 
Without hesitation, Alberto goes all the way out here. <laughs> I need to watch more in Berto tournaments. Okay, I want to see if he's ever made a mistake. Reminds me of um, somebody I might know, my brother Joe. Alberto quickly picking up on the fact that he made a small bet into a big pot. He moved all in, and rightfully so. Oh, man, his assumption absolutely correct. Now, Vince, that's playing the game right now. Humberto playing above the rim. Just brilliant poker. And could it be <laughs> I love that. Play right above the rim. Mike Sexton, my dog. God bless. God speed. We will find out. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. I'll be right back, too. Uh -oh. his muscles here. <laughs> He is the 14th player to win a million dollars on the World Poker Tour. Look at this. A draw out by Eric Brennis. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We are at the Foxwood Resort Casino. We are down to three here on the World Poker Tour. Advanced so much at stake here. Players from all over the world dream about winning a World Poker Tour title. One of these three is going to do so. None of them have ever captured a WPT title, although Humberto has finished second. Well, it is life-changing money. And right now, Twanley quickly folding his hand around a temp hutter. Yeah, a a seven of clubs. Don't forget, $1.5 million is going to go to the champion. Plus the $25,000 guaranteed seat at our championships at Bellagio, and that is potentially worth millions more. Quite big problem. And look at this, Umberto. Chatting it up with his man. The man's got an A7 suited in a small blind. But the interesting thing is that another seven in his hand was exposed. Three-handed, that's how king Temple suited to me. So it's being used as the burn card here, but it sort of diminishes Tim's hand somewhat. Oh, wow, that's weird. 150. 150. Don't let that out, don't let that out, I wouldn't, you need to block that out in a place that doesn't exist. Finally looks down at his hand, he's got a wide pair of fives here. Okay. Look at this, he's going all in. He's got about 1.4 million, that's how much he's got. Tim put about 2.1 million before this hand started. So. I totally agree with the move if you're short. If you're not short, I just smooth call. But um, if he's short, I totally agree with it because now that's a scary call for Tim. Although, like I said, I, I'm three-handed. I see a seven of clubs. I feel like it's ace king of clubs, man. Uh, I do respect the Bartels play way more than Tuan Lee's play. So, I'm expecting a fold from um, from Temp here. Great play by Umberto, like I said. Man, I haven't seen a bad play yet. I'm going to look his shit up. So even if he played this part and lost it, he wouldn't be out. Okay. Okay. Look at Tim, he is squirming in his seat. He wants to call this, it looks like. And if on the other hand, he plays it and wins it, he will be the chip leader. Look at Tim. This is my tournament right here. funny that's why looking and observing your opponents is everything Tuan Lee snap call Umberto snap fold maybe not snap but the decision is way harder
This is the biggest decision for Tim Hunter since he said, I do. Mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty tough call with an A7, especially since the 7 has been flashed. <laughs> well, Umberto trying to hide behind Twan Lee. Yeah. That's an impossible thing to do. Oh, you can see the agony of Temp Hutter right here. What to do? What a decision. Folks, you're talking about 900000 in real money here. What are you having, Berto? King Jack? Well, he's trying to put him on King Jack here. Smaller? Higher? I think I got the best hand. I don't have much, but I think I got the best hand. <laughs> I think my favorite did it. To see this ice, he's size of Now, Berto flirting with the dealer. He's always laughing and joking, even in these pressure pack situations. Temp shaking his head here. Son of a bum. Oh. What a major confrontation happening right now at Foxwoods. That card right there is keeping me from calling this. Well, folks, this is a tough decision, but quite honestly, because that seven was a flash card that you see sitting on top of the deck, I don't it's think right. it's, it's very relevant right here. now. I would have blocked it out for the raise, but you can't block it out for the call. That's the truth. Well, jokingly said he called just to get a reaction out of him. Like I said, I wouldn't have let that seven affect my raise, but it definitely affects my call. I'm, I believe in Temp. I think he'll do the right thing, especially uh, considering the opponent. Humberto, Humberto started dancing like, yes. Now that compounds Temp's problem more here. Come on, stop. Come back. Folks, you're talking about what literally could be a million dollar hand, a million dollar decision, 900000 in real money right now for Temp Hutter. Remember, Temp, you're a coin flip at best. He's got a bigger ace than that seven. It's gonna hurt me. He folded ace ten of clubs oh, earlier. Nature, one less out. Yes, remember what we say in the World Poker Tour. May all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. Well, this is gonna be a monster pot if he plays it, but all his cards aren't live. We see a seven sitting on top of the deck. 1.2. Vince, he's calling him back to the table here. What does that mean? It means he's going for it. He's going to do it. He is called. What a confrontation. Nearly a $3 million pot right here, right now. If Tim Hunter wins this pot, he'll be our chip leader and heads up action. Vince, it looks like it. One of them's gone. John's glove is good for me. Good news. Now you see Tim. That anyone <laughs> Fuck, I hit the fucked up hit the button. I'm going to pause it. All right, I'm trying to fast forward. At any... Welcome back to the final table of the largest WPT tournament yet. 
Back to the felt where poker players are battling it out for... Right. What the fuck? At any cause of shit, do so. None of them have right, ever fucked up a field where we left off. I'll find out. Second. Well, it is life changing money. And right now, Twanley quickly folding his hand around a temp hutter. A seven of clubs. Don't forget, one point five million dollars is going to go to the champion. You're talking about 900000 in real money here. What are you having, Berto? King Jack? Well, he's trying to put him on King Jack here. I don't get it. Earlier against the Wilder player, he was... Um, I think I got the best hand. I don't have much, he folded a better hand. hand. And then now he's... <laughs> now he's <laughs> calling it a worse <laughs> hand. So I, I don't get that play. Um, so... He's always laughing and joking, even in these pressure pack situations. Temp shaking his head here. Son of a bum. Oh. What a major confrontation happening right now at Foxwoods. That card right there is keeping me from calling this. And folks, this is a tough decision, but quite honestly, because that seven was a flash card that you see sitting on top of the deck, I almost think this is a pretty easy lay down here. Oh. 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 I jokingly said he called just to get a reaction out of Humberto. Humberto started dancing like, yes. Now that compounds Tim's problem more here. You're talking about what literally could be a million dollar hand, a million dollar decision, 900000 in real money right now for Temp Hutter. Boys, say a little prayer. He's got a bigger ace than that seven. It's going to hurt me. That's I would want that nature one left out. Yes, remember what we say in the World Poker Tour. May all your cards be live and your pots be monsters. Well, this is going to be a yep. monster pot. If you get shooted and connected and Broadway. We see a seven sitting on top of the deck. Against a looser player, you folded, and now you have a seven suited and against a tighter player. To and you're calling? Here. What does that mean? It means he's going for it. He's going to do it. He is called. What a confrontation. Nearly a $3 million pot right here, right now. If Tim Hunter wins this pot, He'll be our chip leader and heads up action. Please, uh, no seven. One of them's gone. Is the giant's gone is good for me. Good news. Now you see Temp is saying one of my sevens is gone. Well, he knew that when he made the call. He felt that his opponent had king high. He thought the ace high was good. Now he's going to have to get lucky to outdraw his opponent. Here we go with the first three. Wow. Well, the flop is nine. Six deuce with two clubs. Now what that means is Temp Hunter has the nut flush draw. Now look at this. Alberto is chiding his dealer. Oh. Saying, don't you dare. What drama here. Right now, Temp needs an ace, a seven, or a club. There's a million and a half dollars on the line here and the title at stake. Here comes the turn card. Here's the turn. It's a two of diamonds. Well, Alberto has dodged one street. Can he dodge another? He must dodge an ace, a seven, or a club. And if he does, he will put the counter into chapter 11 here. You see the concerned look on Tim's face here. I'm looking for Humberto. Hasn't made a bad play yet. Club, an ace, or a seven. He must do so to stay alive in this tournament. 
Will the two fighters hold up? No. The Jacket Clubs. Tip Hunter has done it. And that's going to do it for Umberto Perez. Adios, Umberto. It's always a pleasure to watch this man play. He is a champion and a gentleman. What a good sport. <laughs> well, he has a word with the dealer. He's having a little talk. Just in jest. Uh, he's great to watch. Oh. He is a third place finisher. A Burrow Brennis. And he gets a I just wish he would did it against Twan, too. What excitement. And Burrow Brennis, a great sport. A great champion. And as we get up the heads up play, it's the custom on the World Poker Tour to have the money presentation. These people are very proud here at the Mashantucket Pequot Tribal Nation. Not only proud of their casino, but of their customs and traditions. What a beautiful, soulful presentation here at Foxwoods. <laughs> You see the beautiful customized wampum belt. Two and a half million dollars sitting on that table. It's all on the line. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion of the World Poker Finals from Foxwoods in just a moment. Six off suit here. Well, he raised it 120,000. Without hesitation, Twan Lee calls him with the 10 7. Prayer hand. Let's see a flop. Everyone's gambling here tonight. Well, here we go. They both have a lot of chips. Let's see what happens. Here's our flop. 10-3 deuce. It was nice for Twan. He's caught the top pair, and he checks it. He's throwing him a little rope here, as we say, Vince. He's flopped top pair, waiting for his man to make a move. Going to play it sneaky. Let's see if Temp bites here. Don't bite, Temp. <laughs> well, he opts to check. He's not falling for card. Turn card, a three. Bring the board pairs threes. A little more free cards here. Juan Lee's going to come out and bet this time. Bet's 150,000. Temp with just queen high. What can he be thinking about here? Other than re-raising or folding. 
Look at this, Vince. He's just calling here. He's going to make a sneaky call. And that tells me he's going to try to take this pot away later, maybe. You would think. Surely you wouldn't think he thought Queen High was the best hand here, but maybe he does. Let's see what happens at the river. Well, a seven of spades comes off, making a potential flush out there. That makes two pair for Twombly, tens and sevens. Yes, it does. He doesn't seem to care about any flush possibility. He's coming out there firing. Looks like a half a million. Yes, it is. Oh, boy. Half a million. Into temp. Temp has absolutely nothing. What can he be thinking about here, Vince? Obviously, he's either going to fold or re-raise. Can he take this pot away if he should re-raise over the top and put them all in? These guys have been playing for four days. We've battled from 674 players down to these two. One of them's going to take home over a million and a half dollars. The other one, nearly a million dollars. He's going to raise it a half a million, Vince, on a stone bluff. Now, folks, who would think an accountant from Virginia could make a million dollar bluff? Now, listen to the increment, it's just 500,000 more. Very interesting. Well, that's the minimum raise that he can make in this spot. It's like a begging call. Very interesting re raise. Well, you're right, Vince. It's the kind of raise that just makes it look like he's begging for a call here, when in fact, we know just the opposite is true. And we know Twan Lee's hands just shriveled up. Twan Lee faced with a very tough decision now. Yes, he's got two pair, but there's another pair on the board, and now there's a possible flush out there. Yeah, we should lay this down. This will cripple Twan Lee. My call. And what a great call by Twan Lee right here. Oh. And bit enough. Wow. Well, there you go. Twan Lee making you a heads great up. call to pick up that Go pie. big or go home. Advance, even though that play didn't work, don't you have to admire Temp for even having the moxie to make a play like that? I want this guy doing my taxes, all right? Go on. All the new lines you can call him. Back and forth we go. What exciting heads-up action we're seeing tonight at Foxwoods. Oh, it is fantastic. Twan Lee just coming back like a bitter ex. He takes control of here right now. Action back on Twan Lee. And he just limps in with ace high on the button. Ace four. Temp Huddle looks at a six three of clubs. And Temp says, give us a flop. He's not going to get crazy. So here we go. The cat and mouse game continues. The flop is queen seven four with two clubs. Temp has flopped a straight draw and a flush draw. And Twan Lee's got a piece of that. He's got a pair of fours. But they both check. Both playing it slow. So here we go. Off to fourth street. Well, the jack of spades comes off. Helps neither player. But it's going to be on Temp first. And he's got a nice drawing hand. But on the other hand, he's only got six high. Make the semi bluff here. 350,000. Nice stiff bet right into Twan. I say semi bluff because even if his opponent calls, although he's only got six high, he has a drawing hand. Oh, look at this. Twan Lee, not intimidated whatsoever. He's going to call it. Looks to me like he's getting out more chips, Vince. Oh, boy. He's got bottom pair. His opponent's bet 350000 Oh, he's going crazy on us. And he's raising him 700000 more. He puts in a million fifty thousand. Sees through the wow. account like a pane of glass going over the top. Well, you can see the sick look on Temp Hutter's face right now. He's saying to himself, geez, maybe I should have checked there instead of bet. What to do right now? All in. All he's going all in. He's, he's going over the top. <laughs> oh. He is going to put the burden right back on Twan Lee. 
he has raised it another $1.4 million, folks. Well, this is what we call a semi-bluff extraordinaire. It's for all your chips here. What do you do if you're in Twan seat? Now you've got bottom pair. How can you make this He's call? Lay it down. <laughs> oh, oh, folks, stand up and salute this accountant from Virginia. What a poker play that was right there. To re raise for all your money with a six high. Just tremendous action tonight on the World Poker Tour. Which player is going to walk away with the $1.5 million first prize? Find out when we return on the World Poker Tour. What a move by the kid. I'm surprised Swan didn't call his stubborn ass. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. I'm kidding, I know he couldn't call, but very brave move by Tim. Great move. Great read, I'm assuming. We're witnessing here, Vince. Unbelievable back and forth action. Just incredible. Tim Potter now with about 3.7 compared to Twan Lee's 3.1. Here we go once again. Action's going to be on Twan Lee. Twan Lee this time looks at a 10 9 off suit. Lines being 50 and 100 still. Raise. He's going to raise it. It looks like a quarter of a million dollar raise. Oh boy. Even the train stops Twan into 10. Tim looks down a king five of hearts here. Not a bad starting hand. So 250 more. King high. Usually the favorite. Two handed. And he's just going to call it. Well, he's going to look at a flop here. So here we go. Over 700,000 in the pot right now. Here's our flop. Flop is ace, king, queen with two spades. Eight, queen. Two, I know Tempest hit the pair of kings. And he checks. Can give Twan an opportunity to bet at this. And without hesitation, Twan Lee quickly grabs chips. He just does not care. He's going to try to steal this away from Tim. Betting 700,000. Got to respect the nerve of both players. Poker all about making correct decisions. But folks, this is one tough decision for Tampa Auto right here. What to do. Guts and the glory. Well, Vance, we're watching some of the best heads-up action we've ever seen on the World Poker Tour. Just great poker tonight. I have to agree with you, Mike. Just incredible imagination by both gentlemen. Action's going to be on. Temp Hunter. This time, Temp has a king nine. He's also got the chip lead, 4.2 million. For about 2.5 million. Potential disaster here for Twan. 
That's one. Checks the two eights. Now, what's tenth going to do? He's doing a little acting first. He's flying top pair with a big kicker. Certainly, he's got to like this flop. Well, we used to that acting job by him. There's over 1.1 million in the pot right now. Eight hundred thousand. I'm all in. Without blinking, Juan Lee goes all in over the top of him. Oh yes, he does. This could be a major disaster for I hope he calls. He raised him another one point one million all in. Now Temp with top pair here and a good kicker. It'd be very tough to get away from this hand. He knows if he wins this pot, it's over. He's going to be our champion, and right now he's in a dominating position to do just that. But first, he's got to make the call. Well, this is the opportunity of a lifetime for Temp Hunter. The crowd, you could hear a pin drop in here, Vince. This could be it, huh? Just on a draw. Oh boy. Right now, Twan Lee must think he has the best hand with two eights. I think he'd have been caught long ago if that hand was beat. You could have me out kicked. Little does he know his opponent has two nines. Alright, let's get it over with. I'll call. Okay. He's calling it. He's done it. And is he going to be happy when he sees Twan Lee's hand? He's got two nines. His opponent's got two eights right now. Temp Hunter is about a four to one favorite. Just so you know, Temp Hunter is the real champion of this table. With a pair of nines. Oh, oh no, he said good luck. Uh oh. <laughs> Remember, just a while back, Bradley Berman said the same thing to Twan Lee. And then he walked out of the arena right after that. But right now, the title at stake. Temp has made the right decision. Two cards to sweat out. 1.5 million to the winner. Oh, it's so okay to say good luck. Winning a World Poker Tour event. Here comes the turn card. Here it comes. Oh, it's a seven. Oh. So far, Twanley has outdrawn him. Now, Twanley has made two pair, oh. eights and sevens. And what that means is, Tim Hunter must catch a four, a nine, or a king to capture this title right now. Sadly, we end the footage here, but we see who was the real champion and who got lucky. It's a three. It's right there, funny how things can, small things can change a whole lot. Only that when you play him. Until next time, see you, final table.